Hello, and welcome to A Slice of Pie. The weekly show where we go over things that happen on the channel, the game industry, and the tech industry all at once. Um, and boy oh boy, do I have a lot to talk about for the channel. Because I've been working on stuff. Lots of stuff. In fact, actually, let's start with this. Just get popping on the screen. Um, that's a new version of our mascot. I created it. I did it in Photoshop. And it is the first thing I have drawn in Photoshop. And I have to say, I did like the process. Um, it took a while to learn the terminology of each tool. But now that I'm converted over to Adobe Everything, uh, my workflow is a little bit more optimized for creating an animation now using that same character. That being said, I still have to figure out animate and that is a process. Um, I did get a sprite animation done, but I wanna make this true animation where we actually have those wings animated and then using some vertice warping to like make things look cool. So stay tuned for that. I am also going to work on a new version of my character that's gonna be stylized more towards uh, Western cartoons um, and a little bit less towards like the Hello Kitty kawaii style. Um, I'm still going to incorporate some elements from both, I think, just because that is my style. So stay tuned for that. So that is the cool stuff involving art that is on the channel and that is all coming up. So art, animation, all that stuff will be back. I promise I'm working on it. It's just going to take me a little while to figure out the software. Let's Plays are also coming back shortly. Um, the first piece of the new recording setup is right here. Um, unfortunately, it didn't come with cables. Um, there's a whole vlog about upgrading the recording setup. This allows this camera to go to this PC and will also allow me to use my microphone when recording this series so I can get slightly better audio. I mean, I mean, the audio is great because I'm using a uh, shotgun mic and it's pointed directly at my face, but the uh, condenser microphone is a little bit nicer. Uh, the audio signature is much higher and of course uh, you're going to get much deeper uh, tones with this one as compared to that one. That being said, that stuff is just coming. It should be all here by next Friday, so next Friday I should have that video. That being said, Amazon hasn't exactly been two day shipping these last few days, so who even knows? I ordered a cable on Monday and it's arriving Friday and it supposedly was two day shipping so that I'm, I'm not going to complain too much, I still can't find this cable in any store. Uh, that being said, I am going to look for the uh, capture card and the stream deck. I know I saw them at a local store so tomorrow I may even just pick them up um, and have them ready to go for the weekend. So that I could just start recording uh, Let's Plays on the weekend and get my setup actually set up. So there's that. Um, there is a vlog that is going to drop either Monday or Wednesday, depending on how much editing needs to go into it. Haven't actually edited it yet, but it has like random stuff in it and skateboarding. Because I know uh, there are a few of you on that are subscribed to this channel that come for the skateboarding, it's in there. Um, I, it's a rusty session, but I personally came out of that session more hyped about skateboarding than I have been in a while. And that is because although it wasn't a land, both a heel flip and a mirror flip were pretty much natural. It was overcoming those mental boundaries that you sort of have to get rid of when learning flip tricks. So realistically, I it was a goof around warm up session that pretty much reminded me why I like the skate and why it's important that I continue to do it. So that will be in that uh, video. I do also want to mention the mirror flip. I actually have it down to a science, I think, so I can start teaching you guys how to do it. One of the reasons I haven't done a tutorial on that trick is because even I, the creator of the trick, 
don't entirely know what causes the board to flip as well as it does, but now I do, I think. Um, it's a weird motion to make, it's a lot of weird science, and it's fascinating if that's actually what happens. I need to record it from an angle above to see if my feet are actually doing what I'm doing, but I'm also afraid of knocking this camera off of a tripod because it's an expensive camera, so... Yeah, I, I need to I need to overcome that little fear or shoot with a long lens and hope for the best. Point is though, mirror flip content is coming. I just I want to land a couple on camera and then have that footage to cycle while I talk about the trick and the potential in the future for using this trick in say a game escape because it is a it would be a legal trick. Um, Especially because there's nothing freestyle about it, which is the cool part. So that is also coming. Just gotta, you know, I gotta work on stuff. I gotta find time. I have a whole weekend to myself though. So I will have a bit of time to work all of this stuff out. I've dedicated this weekend just to YouTube. So that's why I'm wearing the red hoodie, YouTube. <laughs> just kidding. But point is, that's that stuff's all being worked on and maybe next week I will be able to tell you more on that content that being said um, there's also another video in the pipeline DIY test bench part two uh, part one went up it was well received um, I reinforced the bottom of it and I actually changed the design ever so slightly took off that back piece and now it's uh, assembled um, the process of making it was definitely long um, lots of metal working, but it looks cool. The only problem is I don't exactly have hardware to put into it uh, right now. I tried to like just slap something together and I wasn't getting a post, I don't think. I'm not 100% sure. I wasn't actually getting video out was the problem, I think. Either way, um, I put a known working graphics card in there. That didn't work either. I'm going to have to approach it after I've got a bit of stuff set aside, um, maybe a new CPU cooler, just because the one that's there is probably no good. Um, but yeah, I just gotta get that system post and then that video can go live. So, a lot. <laughs> I mean, a lot is in the pipeline right now and I'm actually excited because I, I actually worked on this stuff and made it so that it will come out sooner rather than later. So all of that is pretty cool. And then something you may have noticed is there have been video transition effects in the beginning of the last few videos. Um, that is something new that I learned quite literally after posting Slice of Pie last week. So pretty cool. I'm learning new stuff, learning new video transitions. And yeah, it, it's, it's just working out. So that was all the channel news. A lot more than usual this year, uh, this year, this time. So now, let's transition into the game news, which is also a bigger segment this week than last week. <coughs> okay, so, um, I'm excited about this, but that's because I actually play this game. Elder Scrolls Online is getting its next expansion, um, and if you haven't really played ESO, it's sort of weird. It's... An MMO based off of the Elder Scrolls, but compared to like Skyrim and Oblivion, ESO leans into a lot of those lore books a little bit, and the events, they feel like an MMO-ified uh, event of the Elder Scrolls. Uh, that, the, that's not sentencing. Point is, ESO is slightly different than Skyrim and Oblivion, and some people love it, some people hate it. I personally actually kind of like it, but I also like Oblivion and Skyrim for what they are. So the newest ESO expansion is coming out. It's bringing dragons. I don't know how, lore reasons, but it's bringing dragons and it's also taking us to elsewhere, the homeland of the Khajiit. We have never been to elsewhere, I don't, and I think all of the Elder Scrolls. So this is gonna be fascinating. 
the Khajiit are a weird, weird race with weird religion and honestly, like their people is a lot more diverse than anything we've seen in any of the Elder Scrolls games. I am actually excited to see what happens. They're also getting a necromancy class and then all this I think is June 3rd, um, which not too long to wait. I will be playing it because I have ESO installed and yeah, all that stuff. So I will most likely pick that up and uh, may, maybe just do a let's play on it. Why not? Show you guys what it's like, uh, play the new class. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff for ESO fans. If you're not an ESO fan, I'll let you know how it works. Game Freaks, uh, other IP other than Pokemon, is coming to the Switch. Well, one of them. Uh, the game is called Giga Wrecker 8, released only on PC. Uh, in fact, you can buy it on Steam right now. But it is coming to Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. And there's also going to be a limited time physical release for Switch and PS4. Of course, if you're a collector, that means buy. So, interesting 2D art style game being released for the Switch. Um, I just wanted to highlight it because it's not a game that's going to get a lot of traction. Now, if you thought Fallout 76 couldn't get any more controversial, think again. Loot boxes. Um, some people broke into a developer room, found the only human NPC in the entire game, and also found loot boxes. Now, whether or not Bethesda actually intends to really release them with all of the controversy around this game is yet to be seen. That being said, this being highlighted may sway them in the direction saying that they probably shouldn't do it because there's quite a bit of backlash. Um, this game is already kind of sucky and adding loot boxes to it is just going to make it suck even more. If you ask me, the easiest way to salvage Fallout 76 Bethesda. Let players create their own servers and their own content, like modded servers. And I'm not saying this as someone who loves mods and someone who hates this game. I'm saying this as someone who understands the creativity of other people. Someone. You know damn well, someone is looking at this source code thinking, I can port NPCs from Fallout 4 to 76. And they are thinking, I can probably write a game around this world, but they're gonna need a world to play in. They're gonna need a server to play in. Bethesda, before you do loot boxes, make that a priority and let your community fix the damn game because right now it's boring. If players can add their own quests, their own NPCs, their own lore building for this world, maybe, just maybe, you might actually get something good out of a bad situation. But that's just my thought on it. That or you guys yourselves could add a world around it. And I mean, maybe adding those vaults Add some vaults with some uh, NPCs in it. Right now, the game isn't a game. And you could say the same thing about games like Ark and Rust. There's no game there. And there's no game here. So you just need to do something to make a game out of the world you built. Because the world you built is beautiful. The lore you built is great. The engine is creation engine. It, it sucks, but people know how to work with it. So go ahead, open the floodgates on that front instead of loot boxes, and maybe, just maybe, the people who love your games can turn Fallout 76 into something amazing. That was just some food for thought. Wrong series. All right, EA, this is also bad news. EA canceled another Star Wars game. Now, if you remember the last time they canceled the Star Wars game, they canceled Visceral Studios' uh, single player Star Wars game. 
they then said they were going to make it an open world Star Wars game instead. And now they canceled that game. So now there's still no other Star Wars game except for I think one more project that's in the works. Um, EA hasn't actually been doing very well. The loot box controversy ended up actually causing quite a bit of damage to the company. And on top of that, they're losing investor interest. A lot of people are actually pulling out of EA. And it's mainly because right now, perception for the company is terrible. And it's no one's fault but their own. Like, EA has ruined their reputation to the point that players don't trust them anymore. It's only like the casual gamers. And as much as I hate that term, yeah, they exist. There are people who will play every FIFA and will play every um, NBA, 2K, whatever, and every single Madden game. But those people are becoming fewer and fewer. Not because gaming is dying, but because many of them stop turning on screensaver. Many of those people have moved up essentially. They've become more active in the games that they're playing. And as much as I'd like to say, yeah, uh, filthy casuals, there are less casual gamers than there used to be. Many of those casual gamers are on smartphone. Not as many of them are buying full console games. So, this is where EA is just getting hit hard. And unfortunately, EA has banked on the casual gamer instead of the real gamer who actually spends money on hardware and tech. They went with the people who just wants their sports games. Yeah, let's just say EA has made quite a big mistake. I think if they let Visceral's game actually come out, we probably would have actually seen a completely different story because let's face it, God of War came out this year, did great. Um, Red Dead Redemption did pretty great. Again, these games start with just single player. I mean, Red Dead has an online multiplayer, but the single player was the big draw to that game. So, Visceral's game probably would have done really well. But again, that's just my opinion. All right, and finally, wow, this is a longer episode than I thought it would be. Tech news, tech news, tech news, tech news. All right, so I actually just wanted to highlight one thing from CES that I missed. Um, not really missed, I actually saw it, but I, uh, didn't have time in the last video for it. And that is robots. Because robots are cool. And I love robots. They're, they're honestly, like, they're one of those things that's like, since I was young, a little tiny me, um, I have always wanted to build a robot. And at some point, I am sure I will. <laughs> like, I am pretty sure if I don't create some sort of a robot within my lifetime, I have, I, I am a failure because I have wanted to do it for a long time. But the people at CES, they did it, and they made some pretty cool stuff. They made a robot pet thing that just comes to you for attention and cuddles. It's uh, adorable, and I totally get behind this. Uh, they made a robot suitcase that follows you around. Very limited use case on this one, but cool nonetheless. Um, there was a robot servant that serves you drinks, again, pretty cool stuff. Um, they showed this one actually kind of walking around and having to go to its charging dock, which means it is actually ready for use. And it's not just a, a sale floor show piece thing. It's an actual like piece of tech that could be sold to someone and used. Pretty awesome. Um, that one's Walker. That one stood out a lot. Um, if I even remember its name. Then there are also some pretty like cool quality of life ones. Like there's this one robot that they showed off that's entirely for your pet. Like you can control it from your app so that it gives your dog treats. Cool stuff. Like that. that's all pretty, pretty awesome. And I wanted to end on 
one positive note because of all of the game news genre drama genre drama um one thing on that pet robot from uh ces i know the cameras are important but just a suggestion i'm going to show this on photoshop why don't you design the camera thing to look like a top hat because that would be cute and little cute adorable robots with hats that that sounds pretty cute so with that note we're wrapping up here uh thank you guys for watching uh if you enjoyed watching leave a like comment subscribe uh skateboarding coming video game stuff coming everything is coming winter is coming and yeah stuff wolfie out <laughs>